Hi guys, my name's Katie, and the topic I'm talking about today is sarcopenia. Sarcopenia is defined as age-related involuntary loss of muscle mass. As we age, we begin losing muscle mass in around our mid-20s. Um, starting in the mid-20s, muscle loss occurs at about 1% per year and eventually accelerates to about 3% per year. So by the time a person reaches age 70, they typically only have about 30 to 40% of their peak uh, muscular strength as an adult. This happens because over time, muscle protein synthesis response to protein intake diminishes, but protein breakdown stays constant. So over time, we're breaking down our muscle mass faster than we can replace it. Sarcopenia is a health problem because of the several different uh, impacts that it has. First of all, as we lose our metabolically active muscle tissue, it reduces our basal metabolic rate. That makes it easier to accumulate fat because we're expending less energy throughout the day. As we gain fat mass and lose muscle mass, um, it increases the risk of developing type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and even some cancers. Also, as we lose strength and fitness, it can impact quality of life because it makes it harder to do everyday activities like household chores, gardening, shopping, and even just taking a walk around the block. Because of the diminished protein synthesis response to protein intake, um, several studies have suggested that elderly people actually have to increase their protein intake in order to make up for that diminished response um, in combination with exercise to prevent the breakdown of muscle tissue. The World Health Organization recommends 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. And that's just the blanket recommendation for all adults, um, and it doesn't take age into consideration. The Society for Sarcopenia, Cachexia, and Wasting Disease, on the other hand, recommends anywhere from 1 to 1.5 grams per kilogram of body weight per day, along with exercise, in order to prevent the loss of muscle mass. Some studies have suggested that an even higher protein intake should be recommended for people over the age of 65. Um, anywhere from 1.5 grams as the minimum all the way up to 3 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. Again, in combination with exercise. One of the biggest debates that I came across in researching this topic um, was the best way to get protein to meet that level um, of recommended intake. Um, animal sources are typically the best source of protein because they contain all of the essential amino acids, so they're considered high quality and they're highly digestible. Uh, compared to vegetarian sources, animal proteins um, usually will provide the most protein for the least amount of calories and the least volume of food, which is important for elderly people who typically have diminished appetites and may not want to eat larger quantities of food. Just as an example, um, if you were going to consume 35 grams of protein, you could get that from a six ounce chicken breast, which contains around 280 calories. If you were going to get it from a vegetarian source, say a combination of rice and beans, you would have to have about two cups of brown rice with one and a half cups of black beans to get that 35 grams of protein but that adds up to obviously a much larger volume of food and about 700 calories. Uh, so in order to prevent weight gain, opting for animal foods can help meet your protein needs without excessive caloric intake. And some of the animal sources obviously include meat, eggs, dairy, and whey supplements. But animal sources of protein also come with their downsides. Um, those sources that I just mentioned have more fat and they have been shown to increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. Another downside for some people um, is simply that they don't want to eat animal foods. If you're vegetarian or vegan, those sources are just not an option. Some of the vegetarian sources of protein include nuts, beans, legumes, 
whole grains, soy, <clears throat> which has shown to be also very high quality protein as well, as well as um, vegan protein supplemental powders. In addition to being lower in fat compared to animal sources, the vegetarian sources of protein also have more fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Regardless of whether or not an older person is choosing animal or vegetarian sources of protein, it can still be difficult to meet the higher level of recommended protein intake, especially if you're going all the way up to three grams per kilogram of body weight per day. So in some cases, if intake from food is not enough, supplemental protein shakes or powders uh, might be recommended. Probably the best option would be pre-prepared um, packaged shakes like an Ensure shake or a similar type of nutritional shake because they're already ready to go. They don't require any mixing and they're flavored so they taste good and it's more likely that an older person is going to comply with eating that type of supplement if they need to. I also came across some studies that compared amino acid only supplements um, to set whey supplements. Um, and amino acid only supplements are also shown to be effective in stimulating muscle protein synthesis, but you would need to get around 15 grams of essential amino acids in order to achieve the muscle protein synthesis. As I mentioned before, exercise is also a very important component, um, about as important as diet when it comes to preventing sarcopenia. Exercise enhances the muscle protein synthesis response to protein ingestion, and it helps to maintain and preserve the lean body mass that a person already has. Um, and I found a few studies showing that both resistance and endurance training can be effective um, in achieving that synthesis response and maintaining muscle mass. One study of adults aged 65 to 94 found that performing resistance exercises three times per week increased their muscle strength over the course of 12 weeks. Another study looked at aerobic exercise uh, without resistance training and found that um, cycling, jogging, or hiking five days per week increased muscle mass. Uh, another study of Japanese adults over the age of 65 found that six months of walking, so this was a longer study, uh, still increased their muscle mass, particularly in those who had low muscle mass to begin with. In all these studies, though, it's important to uh, point out that the intensity and the duration of the exercise increased over time. Um, <clears throat> it's important to increase that slowly so that the muscular adaptions can take place um, in order to keep affecting change, in order to build the strength. One challenge for the elderly population when it comes to exercise is that many of them have mobility limitations, um, but there are still ways to get some movement in. There are chair exercises that older people can do that focus on upper body. And I also found an interesting study um, that looked at the effectiveness of interactive video games, like the games that are available on Wii Fit. Um, this one study found that playing Nintendo's Wii Fit Plus for 50 minutes twice a week had been shown to improve postural control and gait in the frail and pre-frail elderly participants. Um, the participants reported really enjoying the games, finding them acceptable and fun and also safe. Nobody uh, felt as though they were going to fall while they were playing the games. And this slide just demonstrates some of the exercises that older people can do, even if they have mobility limitations. And as you can see from the pictures here, um, these can be effective in stretching a muscle, building its strength and also flexibility. So in the educational tool for dietitians, uh, the one page sheet that I produced, I just put a few highlights here. Um, most importantly, to spot sarcopenia, probably the easiest way to do that is by conducting a nutrition focused physical examination. Uh, and you would want to look for muscle wasting, particularly under the clavicle, around the eye sockets, the calves, and around the shoulders and back. 
and you would also assess their hand grip strength and diminished strength would suggest that they are have decreased muscle mass. A uh, 24 hour dietary recall or a longer term, a three day questionnaire could assess their protein intake and that would easily point out if they are not uh, meeting the 0 0.8 grams per kilogram per day, uh, which would be considered the minimum when really um, as research has pointed out, it should be even higher than that. Um, and again, a physical examination could also allow you to assess if there's been any fat gain. To advise your clients who have sarcopenia or are at risk for developing sarcopenia, um, it would be best to suggest an intake of anywhere from 1.2 to 3 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. Um, point out that animal proteins are the most digestible source and the most efficient source of protein, but for vegetarians, soy uh, has been shown to also be a very high quality source. And prepared protein shakes can help meet the requirements of getting if getting all of that from food is difficult. Adding in exercise any way that they can, whether it's seated or walking around or resistance training um, twice a week and gradually building that up in duration and intensity can also help preserve their muscle mass. You might be asking throughout all of this why any of it matters. Um, it's not an uncommon problem for elderly people to lose their strength, lose their fitness. It might just seem natural. Um, but increasingly, it's an important problem to address because as people live longer, a larger proportion of the population in the U.S. is going to be made up of elderly people. By the year 2030, one in every five U.S. residents will be 65 or older. And by 2035, there will be 78 million people aged 65 or older compared to 76.7 million under the age of 18. So older people are going to eventually outnumber younger people. So it's important to serve the needs of this population to help them stay healthy and preserve their quality of life. It's also important to remember that people are living longer. That means they're also working longer. Um, by 2022, 27% of men and 20% of women over the age of 65 will still be working um, compared to 23% of men and 15% of women in 2014. So again, as people are staying in the workforce longer, it's important to support their health um, so that they can continue to you know, work if they want to or need to um, and have the physical fitness to be able to keep working as long as they want.